Federal Military Commission. We've tried to give you a sense of China's domestic mood, but internationally, Jiang Zemin is under pressure for many things, to account for the fate of last year's protesters, and also, and we believe it's one of the reasons that he granted this interview, he must convince the U.S. Congress that China deserves to have its favorable trade agreement with the United States continue uninterrupted. So there was much to talk about in a China spring so unlike the spring of 89. Jiang Zemin is 64 years old. He struck me as vigorous, amiable, and tough. He joined the Chinese Communist Party in 1946, three years before the revolution. His party base was Shanghai, where he became mayor in 1982. Along the way, he worked in a variety of industries, from soap to automobiles. He understands English, and as you'll hear, even speaks it, if somewhat hesitantly. But he is more comfortable with an interpreter, and that's the way our interview, done in the beautiful grounds of the official state guest house, was conducted. Mr. General Secretary, I hear you like proverbs, that you collect proverbs. Do you have one that you think sums up what happened last year? Well, that's really a quite difficult issue for me. And it's quite difficult for me to give you a proverb. Internationally speaking, after the occurrence of the event, some kind of misunderstanding, lack of understanding, or even not so friendly attitudes towards China occurred. And therefore, to give you a Chinese proverb, I would say that it's like much ado about nothing. Well, we feel it's a great deal to do about something. A year has now passed since the military action in Tiananmen and in the streets around it. Do you have any regrets about what happened? Well, I don't have any regret about the way in which we dealt with the events which took place last year in Beijing. I don't think any government in the world will permit the occurrence of such an incident as happened in Beijing last year, in which the students occupied the places around the headquarters of the government and around the headquarters of the Communist Party Central Committee for 50 days. But had we failed in the end to take resolute measures to deal with those events, and then the entire capital of People's Republic of China would have been thrown into great chaos. But the measures that we were forced to take last year were not directed against the young students. But the essence of the matter is that some plotters and some people wanted to use the students' movement to overthrow the Communist Party of China and the socialist system of China. And they made use of those incidents to achieve their own evil purposes. This raises many questions. You say much ado about nothing. You had demonstrations in cities all over China. You were the mayor of Shanghai and there were demonstrations, and you managed to take care of them without lethal force. You put them down with persuasion or some coercion, but not soldiers turning on their own. What we cannot understand is the lethal force. I think the points that you have raised are quite well grounded. You ask why in the 50 days we failed to import some non-lethal weapons so as to put down the event. But the point is that there were different opinions within the top Chinese leadership. And that was the crucial point. What you are saying is very frank. You are saying there was not one voice in charge. Uh, Zhao Jiang sympathized with the students and he was put out. Li Peng had a stronger view. Had you been there, do you think you could have reasoned with the students who had legitimate aims and this tragedy would not have happened? Uh, you're talking in a hypothetical sense. So I have to say that, after all, I was not in Beijing then. But seeing, judging from the way in which I dealt with the incident in Shanghai, 
Well, I should say that one of the ways is to reason things out with the students. And I believe that the majority of the students would listen to our persuasion. However, since things had gone that far in Beijing at that time, well, I don't think that persuasion or reasoning things out so long would lead to an absolute solution. Therefore, I think that if at the beginning of the student unrest we adopted resolute measures, for example, by declaring a ban on assembly in Tiananmen Square, then it would have been easier for us to deal with the problems at a later stage. However, that is only a hypothesis. Lethal weapons were used. You are now the head of the military. Can you assure the people that lethal weapons will not be used again? We have a proverb in China, a fall into the pit, a gain in the wood. I think we learn by our mistakes. That is to say, we have made adequate preparations in terms of strengthening the police force and storing out non-lethal weapons we spent. In this regard, I'm ready to learn from all the developed Western countries. Is it not possible to say that mistakes were made on both sides? On the side of the leadership, which was uh, not united, and on the side of the students, perhaps? So that now you could say we forgive and we start fresh instead of so many trials, people in prison, what seems to be repression. Can't you just forgive and begin anew? That would make a great deal of difference in how you were regarded throughout the world. We believe that the young students are the future and the hope of China. For those students who took part in the Tiananmen event last year, for example, there is no such thing as detaining or imprisoning those students for any slight activities that they have taken part in. And we only bring those people to justice who acted in violation of the Chinese criminal code by advocating certain programs and engaging in destructive activities. You are saying for the Chinese students studying abroad that if they came back to this country, they would be perfectly safe? They could go about their business? That's right. That's right? Mm. Can you tell me how many people were arrested and how many executions since last June? I can't give you an accurate figure about the number of arrests since they have already released some of them. As for the number of executions, I don't think there's any execution directly related to the student and rest. There has been no execution so far, as I understand, directly related to the Tiananmen event. Can you tell us how many in prison now, and would you release the names? Well, as I mentioned just now, I can't give you an exact figure about this because I'm not clear about it. You know why I'm asking, sir. We have the impression mm -hmm. that there are thousands still in prison, that many of them are students. If you want to clear up what you think is our misconception, mm -hmm. then we must have some idea of the extent. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this news. You will be able to find that's out right, and tell That's me. right. Thank I will you. tell you the news. And following our interview, he did supply a specific number, the first revealed so far by Chinese authorities. Forty-two university and college students, the general secretary said, are still under investigation, meaning imprisoned. They are among the 431 people the government says are still in detention after the release last week of more than 200 of the Beijing demonstrators. I asked Jiang Zemin about one memorable demonstrator. You know, sometimes things become symbols. Mm -hmm. In our country, there was a picture of a young man stopping tanks. We mm -hmm. showed it again and again on our news. Mm -hmm. This was the picture that we showed in America. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what happened mm -hmm. to this young man? Mm -hmm. We understand that his name is Wang Weilin. 
Wrong way, Lynn. Yes. <laughs> Do you have any idea what happened to him? I think the picture that you mentioned just now shows exactly that the person stood in front of the tank and the tank stopped. Why did the tank stop? Did the child stop the tank? It's because the tanks, the people in the tanks, didn't want to run over the people standing in the way. But I think this picture just proved that. Yes. What happened to the young man? I think this young man will be not killed by the tank. No, but did you arrest him? We heard he was arrested and executed. Uh, well, I can't confirm whether this young man you mentioned was arrested or not. You do not know what happened to him? But I think never, never killed. Ne you think he was ne never I killed? I think never killed. Never killed. Mm. We know the tanks were stopped then, but later on June 4th, mm -hmm. the tanks did come in and did fire on people. Mm -hmm. Innocent, maybe some not innocent, but they did. One fact has to be made clear. During the incident, nearly 10,000 armored personnel carriers, army trunks, and tanks were burned. And this shows that the PLA exercised great tolerance and restraint during the incident. Will you allow demonstrations if people want to have them on June 4th? If they want to have commemorations or just spontaneously demonstrate you mean this year or this year <laughs> this, this year. year next month we have we have some provisions in the law so those activities have to obtain approval first but they I know that they have to ask if they can but suppose they just want to suppose people just want to come out and demonstrate now can they mm -hmm. without asking approval no, we saw no. a process. No, they can't. The but if things are stable, why can't they just come out? I don't think in any Western country demonstrations can take place without obtaining prior approval. In our country, they can. In our country, you want to demonstrate peacefully? You can demonstrate peacefully. In our law, we have stipulations that such activities have to be approved first. These are our present provisions. Mr. General Secretary, all over Central Europe and uh, reaching into the Soviet Union, we have seen the breakdown of the socialist system. What effect has this had, if any, on the thinking of your leadership? I think in the world development in the last year, and especially in the developments of Eastern Europe, we can say that socialism is at a low ebb there. But I don't think that we can come to the conclusion that socialism has already collapsed. Because as a communist, I'm convinced that socialism will triumph in the end. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but outside of China, where do you see socialism growing and working? I think there are two systems in the world, the capitalist system and the socialist system. China would never impose its own socialist system on other countries. Nor do we believe that the Western countries should try to cherish the fantasy that all these socialist countries' socialism will be eliminated from the earth. That would be impossible to do. The United States imposed military and economic sanctions against China after last year's crackdown. China has been particularly hurt by the U.S. freeze on most World Bank loans. But the greatest fear of the Chinese government concerns its privileged trading position with the United States, called most favored nation status. That comes up for renewal this summer, and Jiang Zemin is worried that President Bush or an angry Congress could revoke it. That would adversely work against the interests of our two countries. And that would not be in the interest of China, nor in the interest of the entire Southeast Asian regions. I hope that the U.S. government would consider this matter from a long-term perspective. If I may speak frankly, there is an emotional side as well.
what happened last year affected us greatly. You're doing this interview uh, is a way I know of you're trying to reach out. But one thing that would make a great symbolic difference is if you were to let the renowned astrophysicist Fang Lijure leave the American embassy where he has taken refuge and leave this country, would you consider that as an act of reconciliation between our two countries? I think that is quite difficult to do because Fang Lijure is wanted under the Chinese law for his role in the disturbances last year. He and his wife were both the behind-the-scenes plotters of the disturbances and the Tiananmen incident last year. Therefore, on this question, there can only be one precondition. That is, first of all, Fang Lijir must admit his guilt, and secondly, the American side should provide certain guarantee that he would not engage in activity in the future against the People's Republic of China. I think this is the basic precondition. We have sometimes difficulty in understanding uh, the hierarchy of the leadership. Do you now have, you personally, have the final word on matters, or is it still Deng Xiaoping? Uh, Let me put it this way. Comrade Deng Xiaoping has always been supportive of our work and he never interferes in the day-to-day -day routine affairs of our administration of the state affairs. And actually, as far as major state decisions and affairs are concerned, we will sometimes go to consult and still he frequently sees some foreign visitors. However, the final decision still lies with us. And before his retirement, Comrade Deng Xiaoping said, that the new leadership should now assume full responsibility and all the successes and all the failures should be the responsibility of the new leadership. And that means you? That's right. That's your predecessor, Mr. Zhao Jiang, and his predecessor, both were um, removed from their positions. Um, do you feel secure? Mm. Well, I have no sense of insecurity. Will Jiao Jiang be brought to criminal trial? No, up to this day, the case of Jiao Ziyang has been handled as a matter within the party. I really envy Jiao Ziyang at one point. For example, I sleep very little. And Jiao Ziyang now has no post, no responsibility, and as the Chinese saying goes, Without a facial pose, if you quite lighten up, and you have no burden on you, so his life is more comfortable than my life. I think he'd rather swap with you. <laughs> but he will not be brought to criminal trial. No, no, no. No, no, no. You have a son mm. at school in America. That's right. I have to sing American. In your son is in goes to school in Pennsylvania. Yes. Pennsylvania, that's right, at Drexel University. Drexel University. That's right. Studied his PhD. P in what? PhD. In, in what? In, in the material science. Material. Are you not afraid that your son will be subjected to bourgeois liberalism? I never afraid about this because my son is very good boy. <laughs> Study diligently. What is bourgeois liberalism? This is exactly what I want to explain to you. But this will mean that in China we oppose and we do not allow the existence of any attempt to oppose the socialist system and the leadership of the Communist Party of China. But combating bourgeois liberalization does not mean that we are opposed to all of the good things of the capitalist system. Rather, we want to learn from the know-how and even buy know-how from Western countries. You have millions of Americans watching who have never met you before, and you are the top leader of your country. Do you have a message that you would like to give to the American people, perhaps in your good English? 
I do hope to promote the friendship between our two peoples. In spite of present difficulties, I believe that the American people will gradually have a better understanding of what happened really in China last June and the support the joint effort to restore the normalization of relationship between our two countries. Thank you, Mr. General Secretary, for being with us. Thank you. A footnote. We received a call from the Chinese Embassy today and they told us that Jiang Zemin misspoke when he said that 10,000 army vehicles had been burned by demonstrators, that he meant to say about 1,000 had been destroyed, but here we don't have any figures on how many uh, demonstrators were killed. Oh, that's right. That was very revealing, though. You know, I think most communist leaders in, in the world now, what's left of them, try to convey the idea that their people's republic is really governed by the people. You know? but, but Jiang made no bones about the fact that the main objective is to keep that single party in power. Uh, he was very frank about that. That's true. I, stability is the word they keep using. But you know, what he will say is we, that the Chinese people don't have a history of democracy as we know it. And that if there is not this central uh, committee, the central force, it would be chaos. Yeah. Do you think they have any regrets at all about what happened? They like say no, but I, I think that they must be aware of, of the reaction in, in our country. And it's interesting. They didn't care what questions we asked. We could ask anything. But they were afraid that we would show the footage of last year of the tanks rolling oh, in. We said, don't worry about that we're interested in the present but they have a long way to go before we feel the way we used to feel about them i guess that's why jiang agreed to this interview excellent thank you Barbara.